to have a position of, to say I did it for the fantasy and for the memory and for the viewers across the screen, the viewers out there. There are certain faces, there are certain moments in the underground, there are certain expressions I'd like to see in the underground on the faces of the passengers moving through me just as I am moving through the city for pleasure and for passage and for the inevitable pause within a station stop, the rasping announcement, a moment in which I'm forced to stop composing so as to get off unless I delay my own arc to stay on and ride another, not to be the bullet but the shot, the city the boredom, the beautiful body of being at the same time over and under everything. I stay on and keep moving. I even repeat myself once more, turning fantasy into memory, into a view to a kill. It is my only true dependency. What I wouldn't do to relive the last moment from the tomorrow of today, to see the face at the height of climax, an expression of shock and disgust and sure silence, an empty expression, a face emptied out of all thought and feeling, to be filled in or up again later, saying softly, it is what it is, I am what I am, and you remember hope of a new feeling, strange flesh, the mouth and lips, dim room, pants rip, quick and silent, coming another scene in the shallow end, where I am still waiting, I am still waiting, I'm still waiting to descend, becoming what it was I would never be, some unspoken satisfaction, where there is a pause, hold the pause. I would like you to keep going. First thing I look for is my own face in the mirror of others, for want is said, and want is said in so many ways. Thanks so much, guys. Um, so I'm gonna end on a, a, I don't know what it is, a poem, an essay. I never really know what it is I'm writing when I write it, and even after, uh, so you guys can decide. <laughs> it's called Time Passes, Piles Up, Presses In, and Flattens, and it's in the upcoming Brooklyn Anthology, um, an excerpted version, and um, it'll be actually in full in the Internet is For Real, and also in a, a great journal called Redivider. Um, and it's, I like to do things recently in lists, so I'm just going to jump around as you'll see, but it's a list kind of thing. One, do we spoil things with our mouths or do we put spoiled things in them? I mean to say, do we spoil things by saying them so is speech more or less expressive than what I am right now feeling in silence? And how to tell the body from the mind, what the body feels from the mind. And what about the moments when one can neither think nor feel? What about them? What about them? What about when I want to want, but not to want to have only to want this and this hardness and hollowness and also the heat of this, the strain and bother of this to say that everything passes except words. Words do not pass. And when they pass, they very often move me, and very often make me move inside another. And it seemed to be my greatest accomplishment, to write a memoir in which one learns nothing about its author, as one reviewer wrote. To know the outline of someone and not the details, the fine lines, the curves and the shadows, the play of light and the lack of it. But didn't I show so much more than the outline? Aren't I showing so much more than the outline? I'm right now leaning to the left and arching my back so as to procure a better view for you. Four, is being touched about touching or is it more about feeling? And in feeling something, feeling something the same as someone else, which is to say feeling something at the same time that someone else is feeling it too. It is always something I am thinking that puts an end to something I am feeling. And what is a pose except the ability to hold on to an emotion while at the same moment making a move toward another? There's no question mark because there is no question. And what I always want is a fluid movement. And what I want is all the time to hold both, the before and every after. Eight. 
My favorite films are the films in which there are no real actors, no plots, no character expositions, no ground situations, no inciting incidents, no dialogue or narration, only the thin silence of erasure, one slide replacing the one before it, the mirror of its audience who are not so much seeing things so much as we are seeing things replace themselves. In this way, seeing and not seeing can coincide. Nothing happens in these films except everything. 9. Opening the first page of a book is like looking at your lover for the first time, or like looking at yourself for the first time from the eyes of your lover. Thank you. Yeah. Woo!